Hi there folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. Going to have a great show. We're going to talk about something that's very common in the beef industry, foot rot. My guest today is Dr. Matt Meisner from the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University, College of Veterinary Medicine. It's going to be a great show. Stay tuned. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Hi folks, welcome to the show and Dr. Meisner, thanks for being here. Um, as always, just as happy as can be. <laughs> folks, this is Dr. Matt Meisner. He is the associate clinical professor and the new section head of the agricultural practices section at Kansas State University, which means this is my new boss. Anyway, <laughs> which is great. And uh, thanks for taking on that, that uh, important uh, part of our business and helping guide us and lead us. Yeah, it's, a, it's an all new challenge for me. So it'll be entertaining as long as I got employees to run the show, we're okay. So. <laughs> well, we're gonna have a lot of fun. And today, but it doesn't get you off the clinics. No. It might make, make get you a little bit more uh, on there, but uh, which is hard to do. <laughs> but uh, um, we're going to talk about foot rot today. Sure. And let's just start out by talking because there's so many things. Every time somebody sees a calf limping and it's muddy, we call her foot rot, and that's probably not the case all right. the time. Exactly. Yeah, but um, foot rot, the reason it's called that pretty frequently is because it frequently is what causes the problem. Um, and foot rot is specifically a, a condition where you get infection between the toes um, between the claws and it's generally a specific type of bacteria that causes the disease. Um, it's a very uh, very aggressive type of a bacteria and it's a fusobacterium and, and this type of bacteria causes multiple uh, problems. You know we talk about liver abscesses, we talk about areas in the throat and the bacteria itself causes tissue destruction, tissue necrosis. Um, it really just eats away at the, at the tissue. And it's a, uh, a really nasty bug to have. And it, it's um, something that fortunately nowadays is still fairly easy to treat, which we'll talk about. But um, the biggest thing is with it, it's severe lameness, it's sudden onset, and there's multiple different um, things that it could be. Um, but um, that's... Uh, so when, when we look at uh, the calf, and, and you can kind of walk me through, but you, you see a calf limp, and kind of talk, start off by telling me, and we may not get through this whole thing before the break, but tell me what you're going to do to get to that diagnosis. You know, if, if they're, um, best best thing would be to be able to get it restrained, and I know that that's not always going to happen, maybe with the rope. Um, but visual inspection is good and, and these, this type of lameness oftentimes is a three-legged type lameness where meaning they're only using three legs because the other one hurts and we can have it on multiple feet but it's severe acute sudden onset lameness and it's usually swelling so we'll see the leg that's swollen um, we really want to get a, a hand on it if we can as getting a hand on it might be as simple as just sticking your finger between the toes um, and then seeing what kind of odor that you have coming off of it um, so if we can get it restrained, we can, we can uh, have a good inspection of the foot itself. And like I say, the first thing we do is kind of go right between the toes to see if it is a foot rot. Um, and I think that's the thing that's important is people don't understand this is an inner digital, you know, it's between the toes right. and it's in that, that webbing and, and it really is a, with that anaerobic bug, it's really a pretty nasty foul odor. Oh, it's just horrendous. Smelling. And once you see that, then you're pretty much on your way to the foot rot diagnosis. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to discuss more about differentiating foot rot from other types of, of diseases of the foot and the beef cattle with Dr. Matt Meisner from Kansas State University. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad that you joined us today. 
This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. You know, I think people are just kind of born with a passion. I wouldn't be where I am today without that horse. Oh, I'm not passionate about horses. That's just something that's in here. I, don't, I can't explain it. Some people go to a job every day. I just go do what I love to do. That's all I know is horse. The bottom line, we're for the horse. It's whatever we can do to make life better for the horse, wherever they are, whatever they do. They're just magic, that's all. They just, they just, they got me. If we always do what's right for the horse, we will never go wrong. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine, and my guest is Dr. Matt Meisner, who is Associate Clinical Professor here in the Veterinary Health Center and the section head of Agricultural Practices and you see a lot of cases. You see cases come in, not only cases that we, we see come into our, to our ambulatory clinic, but, but also cases that are out in the field and, and a lot of consulting with, with our consultants. And there are some other diseases that are going on within feedlots and cow-calf operations and dairy that can sometimes be confused with foot rot. And, and maybe it'd behoove us to talk about a few of those. Right, and uh, there are. and and. There's nothing wrong. We talked about getting restraint and trying to get a diagnosis. Fortunately, foot rot is still very treatable. And so if you can't see it, you give them some antibiotics, um, penicillins, tetracyclines, and there's multiple antibiotics that have a label for foot rot. For the most part, they respond. And so if we can't get a hand on them, we're going to treat usually um, empirically. So make our best get, guess and treat. Within a few days, they should be better. And if they're not, either it's a severe case um, or we've got something else going, okay? And um, like I say, within those few days, we need to have some response. If not, we need to look for these other things, which could be more severe, or the foot rots cause some other problems that need to be evaluated. So what are some of the other issues? You know, I've heard of the hairy heel wart and the strawberry heel and things like that that can be confused uh, with those. Of course, we always recommend work with your local practitioner and, and get a vet out, especially when it starts going through the herd, but what are some of the things that you clue in on that, that make it different? So, if I can see it, um, if they don't respond, we look, and we, that's, now it's, impaired. it's, we have got to have a, have a look at the foot and see what it is. 
soul abscesses would be the next thing that would be probably very common. Flint heels, we seem to get a lot of bruises. That abscess needs to be um, evaluated and dug out before it gets to be a, a problem. Um, and we, yeah, we have some confusing diseases that are similar to foot rot, where you kind of get between the toes, which is a, a, a confusing term, it's called strawberry foot rot. And um, it's yet another more specific type of a bacteria. They tend to not respond as well to antibiotics. Um, and we have to uh, do some topical therapy. They're very contagious. Um, and we see it more often in dairies. We can see it in really confined areas with cattle in moist, wet um, areas where they can spread it from, from uh, animal to animal. And uh, um, it's one that uh, you want to pick up on early because when you treat them, we really want to isolate them. You know, we really want to have them separate from the herd so that they don't continue to spread it. And there's a lot of uh, biosecurity, uh, not only with separating them, but foot baths, things that I never thought we'd have in a feedlot trying to control this because it's, it's, it can be a huge detriment to, the, to milk production and dairies and, and average daily gain and feed efficiency in, in, in our feedlots. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, and it's, it's again, it's another severe, long-lasting lameness that can be spread really quickly. Yeah, and I think that's the big difference. I mean, foot rot is infectious, but nothing compared to what we see with this other drug. Right. The foot rot bugs are in the environment all the time. It's just things that set them up to get foot rot. Cool. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to treat foot rot, some of the things that you can do to prevent foot rot with Dr. Matt Meisner here from Kansas State University. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Gordon Hazard from West Point, Mississippi is a legend in the cattle business. A veterinarian for 64 years and a cattleman for 79, Dr. Hazard received the Mississippi Cattleman of the Year Award in 1990 and was inducted into the Mississippi Cattleman's Hall of Fame in 2012. Also known as the Guru of Grass, Dr. Hazard has authored a widely acclaimed book, Thoughts and Advice from an Old Cattleman. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Matt Meisner from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And today, we're talking about foot rot. And probably not, a, there's probably, you know, black leg foot rot. I mean, you can respiratory disease. This is one of those biggies that, yeah. that we talk about all the time in, in the industry. And 
And so it's kind of fun to have a show where we sit down and talk about something that's that's common, but but it can be very costly. So let's get into the treatments. Sure. Right. Um, so like we said, it's usually fairly responsive to antibiotics, but <clears throat> besides the bacteria, sometimes what sets these things up are, are uh, things like rocks or stones between the claws, and uh, something has scratched them up. So they not responding to an antibiotic, we need to look at the foot. First things first is we're gonna clean that uh, space in between the, clothes, uh, the claws to try to get it cleaned up. Um, dig out any rocks, any thorns, anything that's in that that's gonna be a nidus. And then it's a really um, necrotic bacteria that grows in low oxygen things, so we gotta open this thing up to the environment gently. And what we do is we, the simple thing is we take some gauze with some antiseptic on it and basically floss the claws, you know, so it gently debrides all that dead tissue out and it opens it up to the air, plus it gives it an antiseptic. So antibiotics, next thing is we're trying to debride it or open it up. And I don't mean take a knife and gash it open, but right. just kind of floss it open with some stuff like that. And a lot of times when you're cleaning the hoof to, to inspect it and you've got your foot brush out, That'll open that thing up oh, yeah. too, and, and get it get it breathing. But I think that people don't don't know that that bug that causes foot rot is is anaerobic, or it likes an area where the, where there's no air. Yeah. And so getting that open is is vital. Yeah, and you'll see it just kind of it stays deep, but all the tissue around it's dead, but holds it holds it low. And so if we can get it open to air, we can do a lot of good. So antibiotics that that one would use on. On these, do we? I mean, there's two ways to think about antibiotics. One is at the area of infection, a topical versus versus an injectable. What do you recommend? There's lots of injectables that work very well, and so we usually do a combination thereof. And the the local um, antibiotics are somewhat effective. We can do there's some topical tetracyclines, fairly cheap um, powders. Drying it up after that are good, and um, so I use a combination thereof. And, uh, but a systemic antibiotic will help keep it from tracking up the leg as well. And so um, we need something that way too. Penicillins, tetracyclines. So, yeah, I mean, and then, then there's oh, at least three or four others that have a label for just foot rot. And, and again, uh, work with your veterinarian. Exactly, they, they will guide you in that direction, whether you want something longer acting or, or whatnot, depending so, on your, your operation. So pick up the foot, Debride, clean up that wound. Local antibiotic, injectable antibiotic. And it hurts, you know, so we can get some pain control in there as well. Some anti-inflammatories are usually pretty helpful. Give them some relief there for a bit. Sometimes getting that blood flow back in there will help. Sure. Help with that, they'll use it. So when we come back, we're gonna talk about prevention and some of the things that we do to prevent. But but treatment, make sure that you work with your local veterinarian, have that that veterinary client patient relationship so that you can get that prescription to use the antibiotics that are most effective in your area. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We're going to be back after the break talking about foot rot prevention with Dr. Matt Meester. Beef producers asked for it and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pasteurella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. Join the team, the Beef Quality Assurance Team. Getting BQA certified shows you're committed to practices that produce the highest quality beef in the world. And by visiting BQA.org, you can take the online certification course at a time that fits your schedule and from the comfort of your home or office. You'll also find lots of helpful tips on improving animal health and animal handling practices. Get certified, BQA certified, because it's about doing the right thing. Visit BQA.org today and become a member of the BQA team. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Baxter Black. 
Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Be sure to join me next week as we're gonna discuss preconditioning in the beef herd. Be sure to join me here every Monday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on RFD TV. And I'll see you down the road. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Matt Meisner here from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine where Dr. Meisner is an associate clinical professor of, of medicine here at Kansas State's Veterinary Health Center and he's also the section head of the Ag were cultural practices section, which is this area of the veterinary school that sees the food animals and the large animals, and you're boarded in, in internal medicine, correct? Correct. Talking about foot rot, and we've talked about treatment, we've talked about what it is, talked about diagnosis, now how do we prevent it? Well, it's in the environment. We said that to get go. It's a bacteria that loves, to, it's pretty hardy, um, but it gets amplified with each clinical case, and then it more in the environment. So if we can, the best way to do is to limit that volume of bug that's going to be um, available to cause problems. And so cleaning pins, um, scooping out things, getting them out of areas where uh, the bug just loves to live and so keeping it at lower numbers. Small scratches, wounds, those kind of things. So if we've got jagged areas, um, um, in the in the in the site that's going to cause some scratches in the in in between the claws, try to keep those to a minimum. Ice is bad. I mean, chips and snow and ice. A lot of that stuff will cause those kind of wounds. So keeping pins clean and 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 limit foreign bodies. And I used to get into trouble when I would have a mud hole in the pin, and then the other area up by the bunks was dried, but they'd been walking there, and so they had all the hoof indentions, and so I had them go down there and stand in the mud hole, get their feet good and softened up, and then walk up there where it was rough and jagged. Mm -hmm. And right. it's kind of like having the old wrinkly fingers and then yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. go walk on gravel. Yeah, so I mean, keeping it smooth and keeping anything that's gonna, you know, keep jabbing into the middle of their toes. Yep, so. we used to run a box blade around water tanks, things like that to prevent, but dry and, and that. What about, about uh, isolation? So if we can, if we're really vigilant about new cases that arrive and you have a place to keep that animal while they get treated, um, we can limit the sheer volume of bug in that's going to be exposing uh, the rest of the rest of the cattle in the herd. And so if we can, it's nice to pick them up, treat them somewhere else. It's not always going to be possible, but um, that would be an ideal situation. Keep them, keep them from inoculating that area. Yeah, but in 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 pin cleaning and, and isolating and, and all that is pretty tough. And I hear a lot of people, you know, they'd rather just manage it with a bottle. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> can I just vaccinate them for foot rot? And we know that there are the vaccines on the market. The vaccines are on the market, um, mixed results on, on uh, efficacy. And uh, there's always more to the efficacy of a vaccine than there is just in the bottle. I mean, I think you have to take in all these other type of um, management areas in order for it to work. But, and I just haven't seen any super convincing, you know, uh, work on it yet. Um, it always has a place, but um, I, I certainly wouldn't pick that as my only way to prevent it. You bet. Well, thanks for being on the show today. It's a great show. I like being here. <laughs> we love having you. And folks, we like you watching too. Um, remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what Dr. Meisner and I do here at the College of Veterinary Medicine, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. You've been watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us. And I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. 
For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com.